to join this panel and try to share with you what is going on in my country about religion and education. Uh, mainly because we are in time of change and a lot of things are changing in our laws which are the framework for our religion and schools in, in our country. So just as a matter of context, just as a matter of context, I would like to say that in Chile we have three kind of schools, public schools, private schools, and a kind of voucher system where the state gives some funds to private schools. Then, right. Thank you. <coughs> and then religion in schools would, um, you could see it in a very broad way, thinking that since we first started our republic, we have property for um, religious entities, I mean, they can own their own schools. In fact, the first way where religious freedom was accepted in our country was uh, to teach um, religion for minorities in their own private schools. I mean, it, we have a tradition in religion and schools. So also another characteristic of religion schools in my country is that in, they have to describe an institutional mission where um, they can say or not, if they are confessional, <coughs> then uh, give them the chance to, for instance, put some things uh, in order uh, of admission of students or teachers or the harmony that is supposed to be or happening within the school. And we have a long tradition well, we are in Latin America, we have not such a long tradition, but it's, it's long for us. Uh, a long tradition in religion classes, I mean, in public schools, and the state is the one who pays the teacher that uh, teaches religion. The uh, um, ecclesiastical or religious authority is the one who has to give a permission to the teacher to teach, but then the state is the one who gives money to to have these classes. What happened this year? We had three different reforms that are very important for our school system. Gratuity for all, um, if they are public schools, of course. So the voucher system will change a lot. Then some issues about quality, and finally the mandatory non-profit a goal for the one, the owners of the schools. What did we do in the center that I belong to? To study this under the perspective of religious freedom. We compiled a series of data that the Ministry of Education has in this ground, and we divided, uh, trying to figure out what is going on right now and what will happen with these new reforms. So basically the data that we took was the self-declaration that the owners of the schools have to do about a lot of formation issues. One of the formation issues that they have to compile in the different forms is to declare what about their religious orientation. So in this overview, you can see that there are, are like 9,000 of uh, schools in our country, and among them, it's almost almost half the institutions that say about themselves in religious orientation that they are secular or non-denominational, and the other ones say they are religious denominational. But then you can see that it doesn't happen the same with the students. There are more students that go to fewer non-denominational schools then students to, that go to uh, religious schools. And that's interesting because something happened in between that uh, the perception of people is that there are not so many religious schools and in fact there are more than uh, secular schools. Then, um, if you see, this is a division of the kind of entity that it's behind, 
the two first are public in a different way for public schools, and then you have the voucher system and private. And you again can see that the ones that are public have a lot of institutions, and you can see uh, the difference between the different religious uh, orientated schools that we have. Among Catholic, they it's the vast majority in our country, and then Evangelical, Protestant, Jewish, and others. Among the others, there are some schools Baha'i, um, and some schools that belong to the Masonics. Mason. Uh, there are some others that declare that in their self declaration. So. Um, here you can see again that the number of institutions and the number of students, the Catholic is the vast majority, and then you can see that there are a little bit less in the other ones. Um, I would like to show you also that among the non-Catholic schools, you can see that the evangelical, evangelical for us would mean not Protestant, but the missionary churches, mainly Pentecostal churches, we have like 3,000 of those uh, churches in our country, and some of them have some schools. So it includes a lot of them, and they are the vast majority in the minority. And then uh, there's some uh, Lutheran, a uh, great group of Adventist schools. We have a long tradition also in Adventist school in our country. And then Methodists and from the Salvation Army, but they are what happened to us seeing all these things? Well, it doesn't, if you take just the data and then try to say, well, what, what is the importance of, of what is going on in this, would be that the perception seems not to be taken in account when uh, the legislator does their law. In fact, even the Constitutional Tribunal said about the um, discussing in, in the prevention that they have to do with the law. They said, well, it's not legal for schools to choose the families, considering their rights and duties. Families are indeed the ones who have the right to choose the education model and educational institution for their children. That would mean that for us, for instance, the fact that there are more confessional uh, schools than students, well, it means that there shouldn't be these confessional schools because parents aren't cho cho choosing uh, those kind of schools. So uh, that's a question that is arising now among us. And on the other hand, it seems that the court didn't think about the fact that it's not just the parents who are the ones who choose the school, but also there's a group that they to get together and want to have a school and want to <coughs> offer a different program a diff and have a different mission. Uh, and that seems something invisible for the law right now and it seems that it's going to be an issue over there. So the, the fact of the admission of students, it's going to be a crucial point because uh, this amount of students now can choose whatever school they want and it doesn't matter if you have an institutional mission that is not shared by the families or by the students. Then also there are some limitations that are arising now with these new laws. First of all, the fact of public powers. It has not been quite clear how it's going to be on uh, this thing, but at least we are seeing now in university issues uh, that confessional universities, as mine, might not receive funds from the state. And since until now, our division among universities were among public or private universities, but was in the meaning that we were traditional or not traditional universities. I mean, if we existed a long time, so we do a public service to the nation, 
or not. And that was the meaning of, or, or that was why we received some powers. <coughs> then there seems to be something not said by the law, but it seems to be because of this difference between the mission, the institutional mission, and also the admission of the students, that it's going to be a gap over there, and that arises the thing about the value of internal diversity. It seems that for the state or for the legislators, uh, it's very, very important the fact that uh, uh, in, within the school there has to be the majority amount of diversity, so it would be difficult to have confessional schools that want to educate in their uh, religion. Then there is a third issue about the demonization, it's not a word in English, but it would be the, um, some of the public schools belong to the neighborhoods in an administrative level, and now they have obligatory to be public schools. So, um, if you remember, we, uh, I showed you some, some numbers that also the public schools in that level declare themselves as confessional, mainly Catholic, but also evangelical. So now they, can, they lose that, that possibility and they have to be secular because, I mean, the state has been declaring itself secular for the first time in our history. So it seems to be like that. And then we have this tradition of religion courses and it seems that even that, um, now there are some discussion still in the paper, I mean, but, but it might arrive to some law. There is some discussion and, and a strong discussion about the need of religious courses in public schools. It seems to be there is no need to educate in religion in public schools. And so that might change, but there's also something, and sometimes the debate uh, focus on the fact that we have religion courses and can see that religion in a confessional school would mean much more than have one course of two hours a week with no degrees. I mean, you just approve or not approve, but it doesn't seem. Uh, it doesn't mean that you are not going to pass to the other course if you don't pass religion. Uh, now it seems that that is going to change too because it seems that religion can be, or so has to be out of the school. And that's a huge change for a country that has a tradition in law state, good relationships and collaboration. Um, but uh, it's the trend now seems to be towards our privatization of religion and starting from schools. So that arises the issue about the role of the state and how they did say, I mean in the law, they did say what religion or the place of religion in schools was that public schools will promote <coughs> secular education that means the respect of all religious expression. That would be wonderful. I mean, if it, that's true, it would be wonderful because it seems that everyone has place to be there. But on the other hand, we are seeing these other things that, and you know that Latin America is like that. I mean, we can have law and we can disobey the law. I mean, and we live perfectly fine with that, and we are <laughs> used to that. I mean, so it's important sometimes that we have a coherence among those kind of things. It's totally different. Our declaration, this is the first law in Chile that has the word secular. I mean, we have never had one, and the first one that uh, includes the, the word secular says that it, respect, it means respect of all religion expressions. It's totally different from what happened in Mexico in the sense that education shall be maintained entirely apart from any religious doctrine. So in, in some way we are in a very different position of some other countries in our continent. What about the conclusions? Well, first of all, it's obvious that it's an inadequate category for the state to ask for a religious orientation if afterwards it won't have any consequences. Um, 
we think that it needs to be integrated at least with the institutional mission of the school. And then you can see, for instance, in our study, there's a difference between what a school declares. Sometimes it declares Catholic because it's trendy sometimes, or it's supposed to be very disciplined, uh, a good um, thought on discipline, and everyone is very well behaved. <coughs> or sometimes, if you are thinking about uh, public funds, you don't say that. You say you're secular, but then in your institutional mission, you say that you have an appreciate, you appreciate Christian values. So there is a difference, and it needs to be in some way bond one to another. And then you need to establish the consequences of this self-declaration, not just in public funds, but also in other ways. So what will be the meaning of religion in Chilean schools? We could see different possibilities. Perhaps the fact that now it seems that the state doesn't recognize easily the fact that uh, religious institutions may have, may be the owners of uh, schools, but now we are going through a way where the state wants to allow, eventually, uh, religious entities to uh, be the owners of schools. The second question that arises is the uh, religion in schools would mean just keeping, and that would be enough, for instance, just keeping religion courses, and that, I mean, we should be satisfied with that or not? And uh, that recognizing that the place of religion in schools need a religious environment. And I would say that that's perhaps the main concern. That when a religious institution have a school, is the owner of a school, it's not just because they want to educate in religion or to have religion courses, they can do it right now in whatever school they want. They also can, uh, want to offer a different proposal of the community in the school uh, to the parents getting involved in the school. So it's a different, I mean, it, it's not just uh, an issue of how uh, the religion courses are going to be or how religion is going to be taught, but also how you can provide an environment where the spiritual dimension of the person can be recognized in the different schools. But I'm sure there will be also more <laughs> any possibilities that this reform could uh, <coughs> arise in, in questioning what's going on in religion in public schools in China. Thank you very much. Thank you.